Okay, now I'm getting 316 watts. I got 89 watts from the solar and 259 watts from the alternator port. Okay, it seems to me the average input is 314 watts. Okay, what we have here is the e-taker, alternator and solar charger. Looks pretty good. Okay, we have this is for your solar panel, and you got two connection DC solar, and you also have a 60 amp fuse. You have some looks like battery terminal. Connectors. Hi everyone, Winnie here. Today I'm reviewing the eTaker F1000 Pro alternator and solar charger. A versatile device that might just earn a spot on my off-grid camping list. If you have seen my previous video, you know my off-grid setup relies heavily on portable solar panels. But solar power has its limits. Cloudy days or weeks with no sun can leave you stranded. That's why I'm always exploring ways to charge my power station efficiently and affordably. One great option is a DC to DC charger, which converts power from your car's alternator or solar panels to charge your power station on the go. Today I'm testing the e-taker F1000 Pro to see if it is a game changer for campers. Stay tuned. The e-taker F1000 Pro is a dual input DC to DC charger that charges any power station or backup battery at up to 500 watts from your car's alternator. Add solar panels and it can deliver another 500 watts for a combined max of 1000 watts. I'd like to thank eTaker for sending this unit for testing. I'm not sponsored, so I'll share an honest rundown of the pros and cons. Let's dive in. At the time of testing, the F1000 Pros were priced at $289 on Amazon, which is compatible with other alternator chargers ranging from $200 to $400. Unlike some chargers that only works with specific brands, this one is universal. Setting up the F1000 Pro is straightforward if you follow the manual. This charger came with everything you, require, you need to connect to your car. Setting up the charger is very simple. You connect this cable from the alternator port to the car starter battery. Positive to positive and negative to negative terminal. If you have solar panel, connect the solar input port to your solar panel. Finally, connect the DC output to the power station. The EcoFlow Delta 2 Max use XT60i cable and have two solar input with 500 watt maximum each. To get the maximum performance of this charger, I have to use both solar input ports and connect the solar panels directly to the EcoFlow power station instead of plugging into the e-taker solar input. I will test this charger in my Sienna minivan camper and Sprinter van if it is the right charger for me. Let's find out. Okay, let's 
connect the fuse to the cable. You need an 8 millimeter socket. Okay, now this, this cable is connected. The next step is connect the output. That's a DC positive. Everything is connected. Let me check the voltage right now. 12.53 volts. So I have my solar panel connected to the E taker. And we only getting, let's see what we get. We are getting only 42 watts from the solar because the car is not started. from the solar it's got 44 watts but the eco pro show 42 watts so there's two watts difference and it's charging is okay let me unplug the solar input and see what happened okay as soon as I unplug the solar panel I have zero input now My next test will be to stop the car and see how much power it goes to the generate to the power station. Oh, 
Okay, we're getting 193 watt just from the alternator. Okay, the car is running and we're getting 192 watts from the alternator. The app is showing 215 watts, whereas the EcoFlow only got 192. The app shows 214 watts, the EcoFlow got only 192. Let me ram up the car and see if it make any difference. So I only get about 190 watt input from the alternator. The alternator port is 169 watts. The solar is only 44 watts. I'm kind of disappointed. Nowhere near 500 watt. So my Delta 2 Max only got about 192 watt input through the e-taker. When the car is running with solar panel. I have already set to 500 watt max the charging power limit. I'm using a 200 watt flexible solar panel. Now let me start the car. Okay, now I'm getting 316 watts. I got 89 watts from the solar and 259 watts from the alternator port. So I have 90 watts from the solar and 259 watts from the alternator. So I have 321 watts total. I wonder if I can adjust 257 watts from the alternator. Now I have everything sold from the alternator. The alternator is sending 347 watts. The EcoFlow shows 320. So I finally get this charge working. But it takes a quite a few, you know, trial and error to adjust all these settings, how to get to 348 watts. Okay, back at the apps. The app showing 12.6 volts, same as my meter reading. I'm gonna start the car. Okay, the car's running. I'm gonna heat the run.
Okay, the wire, it's not hot. It's, I don't feel any heat. I tested the e-ticker F1000 Pro on my Sienna camper and Sprinter van for 3 days. The alternator alone delivered 315 to 348 watts, falling short of the advertised 500 watts, likely due to my vehicle's alternator capacity power station limits or something else. For most campers, 348 watts is plenty, but if you have hit higher outputs, share your tips in the comments. When I connect a solar panel, the charger prioritizes solar input, reducing alternator output to optimize charging. If your power station supports 1000 watt solar input, you will likely get faster charging without overloading your alternator. Here's the pros. Versatility, this charger works with any power station or battery, delivering up to 500 watts from the alternator and 1000 watts with solar. It prioritizes solar input for efficiency. Now the build quality of this charger is quite good. The aluminum body stays cool during use and it comes with all cables including an 18 foot AWG battery cable. Long enough for most vehicles. App control, the Smart Life apps lets you adjust settings and monitor outputs matching my multimeter readings. It also offers reverse charging to top up your car battery, though I didn't test this feature yet. Now here's the cons. The MC4 connectors. I find them they're very stiff and it's very hard to disconnect to my other MC4 connectors. I even use a MC4 tool and it's still very difficult. Now, the second one is app dependency. The app lags when multitasking on your phone and I would prefer basic controls on the device itself like the simple F1000 model. This charger only has one on or button and that's it. Unclear settings. The menu lacks clear guidance on how to optimize output or charging settings. I tried using the charger as an MPPT controller to charge a battery via solar with a fully charged battery connected to the alternator port to power the app. Unfortunately I I wasn't able to make it work and eventually the error 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 lights up uh, and I couldn't find error code from the app. So, who's this for? The F1000 Pro is perfect if your power station handles 1000 watt solar input and you have solar panels on your vehicle for fast charging on the go. With 300 to 400 watt from the alternator alone, it is solid for most camper. If you only need DC to DC charging, the cheaper F1000 model skips the app complexity. I couldn't verify the battery charging or MPPT feature yet, but I will update this feature after further testing on my next camping trip. Stay tuned. There you have it folks. If you have used the F1000 Pro and have tips to unlock its full potential, drop them in the comments. If you found this review helpful, smash the like button, subscribe for more off-grid gear review, and join me next time as I explore other charging options. Thank you for watching. I see you on the road.